with Travify Academy, where we get to hear from travel industry voices and experts to learn more about their story and what they see on the horizon for travel professionals. I'm Stephanie Grice, and today our guest is Stephanie Goldberg Glazer, owner of Live Well, Travel Often. So welcome to the lounge, Stephanie, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so excited. And we were just saying another Stephanie, we have two Stephanies on here. That's going to make for a good time. Yes, it's yeah. going to get confusing. <laughs> Yes, it, it might. It very <laughs> At least we don't have a third. <laughs> I know. Yeah, throw another one in there. But no, we're so excited for you to join us here today. And I'm just going to dive into questions because I know we have a lot to chat about. And I'm really excited to learn more about um, your background and just how you got started in the travel industry and, um, you know, how your business has grown to where it is today. So first, can we start off with um, you giving us a quick background about yourself and uh, your agency Live Well Travel Often? Sure. Um, well, it started a really, really long time ago. Just kidding. I was born in <laughs> Miami and I was actually born at a hospital, which is now Johnson and Wales University, uh, which is pretty funny because I do actually like to cook a lot. Although I didn't go That's to culinary awesome. school. Um, and my grandfather actually had hotels when I was a little kid on South Beach, but then it was just called Miami Beach. And so when I was little, they would take me to the hotel for bingo night or whatever. And as you know, four-year-old me or five-year-old me would call bingo numbers. And it was the seventies, just so you know, in case that wasn't obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's so Miami. It I reminds know. me of like golden girls. I love this. <laughs> yeah. Um, and eventually I was like operating the switchboard. I was like six years old and operating the switchboard. It was ridiculous. Um, and um, that was my first introduction to hospitality. That and now I've awesome. had my business for, I started my business in 2006. So I'm coming up on my 15 year anniversary at the beginning of next year, which surprises me every time I say those words out loud. Yeah. And um, I love it. I mean, this year has been a little challenging if we're being honest. Yeah. Is this the most challenging year you've had? Probably by a mile. Yeah. By a hundred yeah. miles, by thousands of miles. Yes. Yeah, it is so crazy. And it's so crazy too, because so many agents, um, I always, I hear the story a lot of, I just started my um, travel business in January or February of 2020. And I'm like, oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. So it's every, everyone's affected, you know, all across the board. Mm -hmm. ah, it's so crazy. And on your um, business, your travel agency, you have a very interesting story of how you have a travel agency. Now, can you tell us how you got to live well, travel often? Sure. Um, it was by accident. So I sort of fell into it. Um, I had, t I had a series of jobs that I'm much better not working for other people. We'll say that better working for myself lesson learned the hard way a lot of times. Yes. Um, I, I was on a business trip to California and I was reading an article about daily money managers and people that just pay other people's bills and that's what they do, which I thought was really odd. And I thought, well, it doesn't seem that hard. Like I could do that. Um, and I started a personal assistant business and I came up with a list of things that people would need if they were hiring a personal assistant. And after about five minutes, I added travel to that list. And it didn't actually occur to me to become a travel advisor, but I figured I could just book people's travel because I like to do it. I'm good at it. I like to travel. And um, turns out really, really good at booking travel, really not so good at the rest of it. <laughs> you know, I was doing some, some organizing and, and people don't like you when you throw away their shoes. People like you when you send them on vacation. Oh, yeah. That would be a lot more pleasing for people. <laughs> yeah. That would and be, that's yeah. Started. So it, it was really just sort of dumb luck. I thought this was a good addition to the repertoire and then it became the entire repertoire. Yeah, that's awesome. But that works. You found yeah. what works, you know? Exactly. And, and how did you start finding your first clients? Oh God. Um, how did we find our first clients? That also probably was a little bit of luck and a little bit of, um, well, it happened like this. So one day I met my husband for lunch and this was right after I started my business. 
and we went to a um, salad bar restaurant. Remember those when you can go to buffets? Yeah, <laughs> forgot about those. So I have my little tray and I'm making my little salad. And across on the other side of the restaurant, I see a friend of mine and he was like, have you started your business yet? And I was like, yes, I just started like two weeks ago. He's like, great. I'll see you Friday morning at 7.30. I was like, what? Yeah. And he was like, yeah, you're just, just meet me at this, at um, this place seven, at 7.30 Friday morning. I was like, okay. Um, and it was for a networking group. I'm still a member of the networking group. And um, that's really how I started networking face-to-face. -face. It's a very face-to-face -face business. Um, and it's, it's all referral based really. I mean, people have to either trust you or know someone else that trusts you. Yeah, definitely. And do you do anything now to um, help with referrals or tell or have any incentives for clients to for word of mouth, pretty much? Um, yes, the incentive is that you get to work with me. I love that. <laughs> that that's the incentive. Yeah. Um, and I'm pretty good at it. So, um, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm really good at what I do. I have a lot of great connections. I've been doing this for a long time. And so, I mean, I say it kind of you know, sarcastically, but it's true. You get a lot of experience when you come hang out in the live well, travel off and travel camp. Um, but I do, I do still do a tremendous amount of networking. Um, this year's mostly via zoom, but mm -hmm. in a normal year, whatever that looks like going forward, there, there are definitely, there's a lot of advantages to in-person networking as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And for newer agents listening or um, agents who are looking to build their clientele up, what are some networking opportunities that you join and how do you find those? Um, Google is your best friend, mm -hmm. truly, because wherever you are in the country or in the world, right? I don't, I, I mean, I assume you're catering to a global audience here. Um, wherever you are, there are organizations that offer networking opportunities and they might not be called networking opportunities, but they are right. Your local chamber of commerce is always a good place to start because every city has one or two True. or half a dozen. Um, and sometimes they offer, you know, meetings like weekly meetings or biweekly meetings, or they might do a monthly luncheon where you can advertise. Um, I haven't really found print advertising to work for me so well. So I don't really do that, but, um, but it's the in-person meetings and it's the in-person getting to know other people. Because when you start talking to people, they can see what you like and what you don't like and how excited I get when I start talking about cruises or, you know, private tours of the Vatican where you get to go in a secret room and see the cabinet of masks that nobody gets to see, well, right? Yeah. It's not even that expensive. Um, or like an after hours tour of the anthropology museum in Mexico city where nobody else is in the museum. Also affordable, strangely enough. Um, <laughs> you know, those kinds of things I get really, really excited about. Yeah. And when you talk to people in person about it, they can feel your excitement. That is awesome. That's such a good point because we talk about all the time, you know, a lot of advisors out there are focusing on their marketing, social media efforts, you know, what can I do here and there, but really that in-person or Zoom uh, for mm -hmm. right now, what, we're, what mm -hmm. we're living in, but that really is so important that it is a face-to-face -face business and always building those relationships and showing why you would want to book with, with you, you know? Right. So yeah, no, that's an important, important lesson. I think that's awesome. I mean, I think social media is great. And, you know, I put some stuff out there on social media and I get a few things here and there, but that's not where I get the bulk of my business and it never has been. I mean, it's, it's, it's sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's just another channel to boost the same message. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. It's just an extra thing to mm -hmm. help boost that. Yeah. I like that. And going off of, you know, social media and networking and finding what works for you. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges and lessons that you've learned while owning your own travel agency and building it up? Um, number one, <laughs> I mean, I could, I could go from like one to 600, but I'll, I'll yeah, I know. just give you a couple. A lot. Um, number one is like, you can't assume that because one comp company that you work with, I'll just use cruise lines as an example, because 
they're easy. Um, you know, you can't assume that if you sell a lot of, of Royal Caribbean cruises that suddenly you're going to go, someone wants to book a carnival cruise or they want to book Oceana or they want to book something else. The rules aren't necessarily the same, right? The timeframes for payments aren't the same. The rules rega regarding refundability aren't the same. So there's different fair codes and different things. So you really have to learn your product and learn what your customer wants because it's much easier to know what someone wants and then go find it than um, learn all of the products. And I think, I think a lot of new people get hung up on that, right? Like I just want to learn about all the products, but you don't have anyone to sell them to. So you need to learn about some products, right? If you're new, yeah. start with a couple of things that you really like, right? If you like celebrity cruises, go learn everything you can about celebrity cruises, take their five-star academy, and then you can talk about it. And then just naturally, you'll learn more about some other stuff too along the way. Yeah, that's really important. And there's so many of those resources available too, because uh, mm -hmm. those suppliers want you to know this stuff and want you to share this information. So yeah, that's really important. And what's your personal favorite? What's your favorite thing to sell? Your favorite type of travel? Oh God, it's so hard to say. You know I what know, I, I keep really love to questions. do? No, it's true. But <laughs> what I really love to do, and I'm going to say my favorite thing to create is going to be a cruise with a land component. So lands and cruise. So you could do some really fun excursions and different private tours, but you also have that nice like hotel component, but you also have the cruise. So you don't have to unpack and pack every two days. So I like those kind of things. Yeah, that's nice. It's kind of a mix of a package with a little FIT in it, you know? Exactly. And that, yeah, exactly. And it's really customizable to everyone, every client's needs. Yeah. Oh, that's a if I were a travel advisor, I feel like I would have the same answer. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I like that. And so going off of that, besides your favorite type of travel to sell, what is your favorite thing about being a travel advisor? What do you love most about this industry? Oh God, there's so, again, so many things. So many. Um, number one, we send people on vacation. So when people come home from vacation, they are talking about their great vacation and what a wonderful time they had, right? We're not selling boring old insurance policies. Oh, wait, we actually are, but it's only to go with your vacation. <laughs> um, you know, we're not selling something boring that you have to buy. We're selling something that's exciting and interesting and can be catered to exactly what you need. So like I, I've sometimes had people call me and they say, oh, this person did this trip and it sounded so great. And I want to do that same trip. And I was like, really? Do you like all the same things that those people like? Well, not exactly. Do you have exactly the same interest? Well, not exactly. So why don't we tailor it to what you like? And then they look at me and say, we can do that? Sure, we can do that. It's what, this is actually what we do. <laughs> no, that's so true. And so on that, do you have a special workflow of how you get um, you know, new clients in? So do you have like a form they fill out or do you just connect with them? And then you start dissecting what their needs are and explaining you know, what you can do? So um, I do have a form. It's on my website. It says new clients start here or existing clients start here and you pick one and you fill it out. That's the theory. That's not the reality. Nobody wants to fill out a form. I have so far to date had, I think, zero people fill out that form. Wow. Instead, what I have is this very, very fancy system. Can you see it? It's a blank notebook. Oh, there it is. And I a pen. There. I have a notebook oh, and a pen. And so when people call me, I take notes. Um, and then I do set them up. I do use Travel Joy for the workflow. I have, um, I use ClickUp actually for my back office workflow. And of course, we send them a beautiful itinerary made in Travelify. Oh, yes. Oh, those are always, those are always very nice. And yeah. people love them. And then I tell them, oh, and you know what? When you work with us, we have this fancy app. You could just download it and you have your whole itinerary on your phone and you have all your paperwork on your phone. And if you forget to print something out, it's on your phone. Yes. Really? Oh, yes. And people love it. Why do people love it? Because it's awesome. It's an awesome. Yeah, product. it's different. And if you're yeah. listening to this and you're not using Travify, <laughs> stop right now and go sign up. Yeah, That's go all. sign up at Travify.com. <laughs> <laughs> Swear we didn't tell her to say that. That's oh, it's thanks true. for the plug. <laughs> well, it's it's fabulous. Yeah. I had no is. idea how I was how much I was missing out on until I started using it. 
I know. Well, it's just kind of just the world that, you know, all the technology coming in and when we started and now, um, cause I don't know if there, there were probably other software that were a little bit similar, but not, not the same as, um, what Travify is and has become. And so it's, really cool to hear those stories and you know and, and sell and you can use a proposal feature to really mm-hmm. sell that vacation so that's cool yes and here's the best part it's easy to use yeah it is I- indeed stephanie you are correct <laughs> and if anyone has questions support like me can help you so yeah that's perfect you've helped me before <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's actually for you listening. That's how um, I met Stephanie was because she's a user and we just were always chatting or at, asking questions when you joined our happy hour and mm-hmm. just kind of got to know each other. And so it's really cool. So it's like, Stephanie, you need to be on our podcast, share your story with everyone. So it's, it's yeah, super yeah. exciting. And it's just always cool to hear, you know, what's working with for travel advisors, what's working, what's not working, what you love about, you know, things and you know, just giving tips to other advisors. So I think that's really awesome. And one thing that I want to throw in here too, um, kind of going back is um, I want to highlight what you do marketing wise, because I know that you have a blog um, and you still share on your blog, just kind of for marketing purposes and sharing Mm -hmm. things with your clients. So can you share what you do with um, that and how you market your blog? Um, Sure. I've had my blog for Oh my God, like 11 years because I'm a dinosaur. I had a blog before like everybody on earth had a blog, but yeah, now we all have blogs, (laughs) (laughs) Um, but I'm old. So I have, I've had one for a long time and it started as just like kind of life in the Florida Keys and Key West and whatever. And I expanded it to be really exclusively about travel. And so now what we do is I, I market, I do post, um, usually it's gotten a little bit, you know, less frequent over the years, but at least once every two weeks, if not every week on the blog, and then I'll, auto- I'll post that to social media. And I will also use my blog posts typically in my e-zine that I send out to my email subscribers every couple of weeks. So sometimes it's a video, sometimes it's a blog post. Um, I've also started doing videos recently, um, mostly because my assistant, Amy, who is the best, by the way, uh, <laughs> keeps telling me just, can you do video for this? Stop telling me about it and make a video. So I'm now a video making machine. I love that. That's, I know, no, that it's so true. And that's one thing that's kind of came out of, did that come out of 2020 is starting to make videos? It actually started a little bit before that. It came okay. out of me hiring Amy and her saying, video. Yeah. Thanks. I'm like, oh, video. stop talking. And she's like, no, no, just do a video. Okay. I'll do that. And so what do you use for your, uh, when you create your videos? My cell phone. Love it. Yeah. See, it's so easy. Mm-hmm. It is. It's very easy to do. Yeah. We've talked about that in um, previous webinars about marketing ideas and not to highlight Travify again, but you can put a video in your Travify itinerary or proposal. So Wait, you, you can? To... Yeah. Yeah. So it's a feature. It came out probably earlier this year, but right when everything was happening. So people mm-hmm. probably didn't notice. Um, but yeah. So what a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some agents will do because uh, other ones are still, we're still figuring it out is um, that you can put, make a video and then put it in your proposal or itinerary um, just as kind of a nice little addition of, I'm you totally know, doing that. Yeah. I'm totally doing that. Know, Although we really might cool. be, do, we might be doing that a little bit already with some videos, but I like the idea of putting a personal video in. Yeah. That personal touch. Well, mm-hmm. and I really feel like with 2020, how we started using zoom so much more and, you know, this virtual face to face. And, um, I think it's made a lot of people more comfortable about it and, mm-hmm. you know, shown how easy it is and it doesn't it cost nothing, you know? And so, yeah, no, yep. I love that. It's a great idea. Yeah. So, so we're, we're, I'm dabbling my toe into, into videos and it's, it's been, I've been going a little bit kicking and screaming. I haven't really been all in, but I'm all in now. We're making videos. Yeah, that's great. And is there anything in, so, okay, so we're coming to the end of the year and we're going into a new year, which is always Thank really God. exciting because, well, yes, <laughs> on this particular year, yes. And for anyone listening, we are recording this in December of 2020. So 
We are still in 2020, so you might hear this in 2021. You've made it, congrats. Um, right. But we made it. Um, but 2021, the beginning of the year is always an exciting time of what am I going to do this year? What are my goals? So do you have any big goals for your business in 2021? Well, I think I have to resuscitate my 2020 goals because those were sort of crushed. Move those over. Um, yeah. yeah, we're just moving them right over. Um, I have, you know, I have a, a lot of trips that were rescheduled for myself personally, in addition to my clients. And so I'm looking forward to some of those. Um, and um, well, can I go back to marketing for a second? Not oh, to yes. the subject again. Yep, go but back. One of the things that I've really, we've started doing a lot of, and I really, really like is in my social media posts, we'll add a sample itinerary. And that sample itinerary mm -hmm. is the thing that we did in Travify. And so it's, um, it's just a sample of, it could have been something that we created for a client that we've taken, you know, the personal information out of, or something brand new or something that we want to create or something that someone asked about one day. So we decided to just create a sample itinerary. And now when people ask, oh, do you have a sample itinerary? Here you go. I have one for practically the whole world. Yeah. It gets a little tricky when people ask how much things cost because it depends and everything is customizable, yeah. but, um, and we make the sample itineraries really, really fancy. Oh, I Fancy love hotels. that. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Cause you want to start from the pie. All virtuoso. We can. Yeah. So yeah, we can, and virtuoso, we have that plugin where you can get all the information right away. It's awesome. So nice. Yes. Uh, that, that's a new feature too. Yeah. So we had it, um, we've had it for a while, but it was hidden. So I don't know a lot of times. So it was in the place. And now mm -hmm. when you added, um, which again, I think this was earlier this year again mm -hmm. once everything was falling apart we were we were like look at all of these things and then everything was happening um but that was one of them yeah we're like well shoot but people will see it when things get better mm -hmm. um but yeah so now when you load it it just all comes up so you can see it's it beautiful. right away it's beautiful yeah so exciting well thanks yeah again everyone we did not tell her to say this stuff so yeah, just tips yeah Great. And so are in, in uh, 2021, are you building new trips or have you been building trips, um, you know, during more downtime or slower time, just kind of getting it ready for everybody to start coming in and asking about travel? Yeah. You know, last year, uh, this year, 2020, in January of 2020 was super busy. It was by far the best month I ever had. Wow. Ever. Yeah. Um, we sold a lot and we did a lot of great trips, really interesting stuff. Some really nice luxury cruises, some nice hotels, nice land trips. It was just great. Um, and then, and then we slowly undid that all for the whole year, but I'm, I'm optimistic that people, you know, once I think that by the time this airs, there's going to be more information than we have now about a potential vaccine and all that. There was some good news that came out today. So I think once more of that starts coming out, people will start moving around a little bit more when they call and say, where can we go? And the answer is not only Mexico or Costa Rica, yeah. then they'll be more excited to move around. And also we need cruise ships to start sailing again in whatever yeah, format that looks like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true too. There's been some that have come out and they're getting ready to go, right? So it's just hoping that nothing pushes it back again, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, hopefully when, when you're listening to this, I'm sure there'll definitely be some new news. And I mean, cause things are moving quick now, I think with those yeah. vaccines and so super, super exciting stuff. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's awesome. And high hopes 2021 is going to be amazing, but going back also to back in the day, if you could give yourself one piece of advice before you started your business, what would that be? Um, number one, manage your expectations, right? You're not going to say, hi, I'm a travel advisor. And then people are going to start, you know, a hundred people are going to come to you and say, here's $40,000 for a trip. Can you book it for me? Right. That's not happening. Yeah. Right. So you have to expect that you're going to be moving slowly, but you know, part of that is managing the financial aspect because when you start slowly, even if you start, even if you start and things move quickly, you're not getting paid for the most part until after people travel or at least after final payment is made or whatever, whatever your agreement is. 
Um, but the suppliers are not paying you, at least until they have their money in full. So you may not see any commissions for six months, eight months, a year. It depends when you're booking. So that's a little bit challenging. And the other thing is, like I said before, just learn as much as you can because there may be places that you never thought of because you're not interested in it. You don't have to be interested in every place, right? But other people are. It's a big world out there and people have a lot of different interests. And unless you're just catering to people exactly like you, which would be pretty damn boring, um, you know, learn as much as you can about other places. You don't have to travel everywhere, but you have to know a little bit or you at least have to know the right people. So make friends with your BDMs, right? If there's a supplier that you work with a lot or you want to work with a lot, even if you're just starting and you, you think, oh, you know what? I don't have a lot of business, but I would like to sell a lot of whatever product, reach out to your BDM and start a conversation with them. They'll tell you everything they can about their product because they want you to sell it. Mm -hmm. It's a win-win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something you can just start doing right now, you know, just Today. going to, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Literally right now. And, um, do you ever look for things specifically for commission based or do you try to spread yourself kind of all over when you're looking for new things to invest your time in learning about? If that makes sense. So no. kind of like, um, <laughs> I know I was like, following. that kind of didn't really make sense actually. So let's say that, um, you know, you're like, I really want to start learning about, um, tours in Egypt, private tours in Egypt. Do you start learning about that because um, it has a high commission or is it is that your driving factor or is it more that, you know, you're like, I just think that there's people who would be interested in this, so I should know now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like working, you have to work with the companies that provide the best product for my mm -hmm. clients, period, with the most, these days, the most flexibility. Right. So, and people that have um, reacted well over the last eight, nine months. So if you're looking for, to learn about Egypt, I, for example, you know, I would start looking at the river cruise lines. They all have um, Uniworld, AMA. There's all sorts of river cruises in Egypt that are super popular. And there are plenty of land companies. And I would just start looking at those, looking at some of the popular itineraries through, even if, if you start looking for, I don't sell a lot of escorted tours. I do a, a handful, but that's not really the bulk of my clientele. Most of it is custom. So if you look, if you look at some of those escorted tour companies like Trafalgar or Luxury Gold or whatever, or it's site and you can see what their itineraries are, you kind of learn what the most popular things are in that mm -hmm. area, right? They're taking you to the popular sites that you have to see. And then you dig a little bit deeper. And, and if you work with some local people or DMCs, they have even more insight and can help you customize things to your client's needs. But, you know, I start with the big picture because you have to kind of know the layout. For example, like if you want to start sending people to Italy, the most popular trip for people that haven't been is Rome, Florence, and Venice. And you have to know where they are in relation to each other, how to get from point A to point B, and the logistics of it all, as well as what you're going to do in each of those places, like the highlight reel, before you can dig into the more obscure things. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. As I know, I know a lot of um, people listening, if you're new, and we have a lot of new, um, new agents, which is so exciting, because it's just the businesses, it's, it's, it, this sounds weird to say, but it is booming because travel doesn't end and everybody loves travel. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's really cool. So I think that's those are really good tips on just where to get started and how to put your mindset into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no, oh, that's awesome. And, and that is really all the questions I had besides the rapid fire that we'll get into. But before I get into that, though, is there anything that, um, that we didn't talk about that you wanted to? I don't think so. You covered a lot yeah, of ground. I don't think so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> See, this is so much fun. We just, just chatting away just and all these different things, but this is my favorite part though. So I'm super excited because I'm really excited to hear some of your answers to this. Okay. So these are rapid fire questions. There are seven in total. And if you, I know, and if, if you feel too on the spot with any of them, you can say pass and we can come back. So okay. no worries. So no worries. You can take your time. Okay. So first one, here we go. 
What is your favorite road trip song? Road trip song. Mm -hmm. You know, I know, I think a lot of people would um, answer some road trippy songs and I just want to listen to, you know, whatever, like the B-52s the whole time. I like that. So you just, <laughs> just put them on, I'm let it go. I'm something I like. <laughs> yeah, I like it. No, well, and it depends. Do you ever listen to like podcasts or... Um, or audiobooks, or is it just music? Just put it on, let it play. Well, if I'm in the car with my husband, the only podcast or something like that that we will listen to is um, Spanish, because we're trying to learn Spanish, because oh, we nice. should know more Spanish than we do. Um, but he doesn't like to listen to people talk. He prefers music. So. Oh, well, yeah, if I'm in the car by myself, music. I will listen to podcasts. Awesome. No, I like that. Okay, so the next one, here we go. What is your favorite travel movie? Okay, this isn't really a movie, sorry. Um, oh, but my new favorite thing is Somebody Feed Phil on Netflix. Oh. Have you seen it? Wait, it sounds familiar. It's a series. I'll have to look that up. It's, um, it, Phil Rosenthal is the guy who created Everybody Loves Raymond, and now he has this travel show where he goes around the world and eats, and it's amazing, oh. and you should watch it. Oh, I have, and okay, also that's Phil about. Rosenthal. I feel like I should be earning royalties because now there are a lot more people watching your show. Yes, <laughs> you know who to call, Phil. <laughs> and I'm gonna go check that out because that. Awesome. Not to get off, I, I'll stay on topic here, but um, that is something that I've been loving to do is watch travel shows right now because we can't travel. So it's just like gearing us up for excitement. So mm -hmm. yes, that's a great great time to watch those. I like that. So speaking of traveling, what is your favorite destination that you have traveled to? That is so hard. I know. This, so, this question trips everyone up. Well, I have an answer for you, but I always ask my husband, like, what's your favorite, what's the best trip or whatever? And he always, every trip that we're on, he's like, this is the best trip we've ever been on. <laughs> every trip. It doesn't matter where we're going. I mean, it has to be someplace good. But I would say my answer to that is Florence. Um, because it's amazing. We also have a very good friend that lives there. So, um, we went for the first time when they got married and nothing funnier than a room full of Italians doing the YMCA. Oh, I love that. I kind of want to go on YouTube and try to find a video of that. I can see it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> and the reason why also your husband probably enjoys everything is because you're probably planning it all. See, you're good at what you do. Mm-hmm. That's why. Oh, and when I ask him questions, like, would you like to do A or B? He'll be like, whatever, you're the professional. Like, I know yeah, you have an opinion sense. about it. Pick one. Yeah. Like, like all right, it's this one. <laughs> so, so this one is kind of similar, but a little different. What do you think is the most underrated destination to visit? Mexico City. Oh. I know. Yes. Right? That was right. Tough. Like it was also the last place I went. We went just um, about a month and a half ago. And I was not, ex I was expecting for it to be fine. I was not expecting yeah. to fall in love. It is amazing. There's so much to do, tons of museums. A lot of them are closed because of COVID, but tons of museums, great food. People are nice, very user-friendly. Oh, the traffic sucks, awesome. but whatever. Yeah, that's what I was say. I actually, I'm, I've been watching the Queen's Gambit, which is so mm. good. And she goes there and I've never won. I've never thought about going to that episode City, yet. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Well, I guess it's not, it's not really doing too much. It's not too much of a spoiler, but they do go there. And I was okay. like, wow, what a cool place. So it's yeah, awesome. that's good. You have sold me. And we that. have really nice virtuoso hotels there. Oh, good to know. Look at this. I'm going to be planning a trip after this <laughs> recording gets over. Good. Um, <laughs> um, so another question for you here is what is the best meal you've ever had when traveling? Oh God. That, that is impossible to answer because there are too many. Um, you know, where do I even begin? Do I begin in Bologna with these beautiful handmade gnocchi swimming in a pool of butter and sage? Wow. Is it a food tour in Barcelona where every stop is better than the last one? We're just enjoying and having some local stuff and having some local wine. Um, it could be in Hawaii on our honeymoon at the beach house. 
I, I could, I really could talk about food for days on end, um, but I will not hijack your podcast. Oh, maybe we need a, a spinoff, a spinoff series <laughs> yeah. of um, food with the stuff. What to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in for that. I'm going to share that to uh, CEO David after this. Like, <laughs> so many ideas. <laughs> Um, so, okay. So me also, that all sounds delicious by the way. Um, but going on to books and articles is that, what is the last great book or article that you read or blog post? Oh, well, it's clearly my blog. Um, no, yeah, I was going to say it's your blog. Of course. <laughs> um, the besides last great book I read. Um, so I'm in a book club and I tend to read like I, whatever. Sometimes I read grudgingly what they pick, but I read them. And the last book was really, really good. It's called The Vanishing Half. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. It's really good. You should read it. It's a very quick read. It's easy, but it's excellent. Nice. Yes. Okay. I'm putting that on my Goodreads after this. <laughs> getting so much out of this. <laughs> I love it. So happy okay. to help. I, I know. This is awesome. Um, okay. So now this question is my absolute favorite is what oh, is God. the craziest thing that has ever happened to you while traveling? Okay. I got one for you. Yes. Um, it's a little bit of a long story, but again, because I'm a dinosaur, um, <laughs> we took a trip to Montalcino, which is in Tuscany. It's where the famous Brunello de Montalcino vineyards are. Um, and we didn't have maps. We didn't have Google maps. We didn't have smartphones, but we had a rental car, which was not quite as automatic as some might make it out to be. Um, so we had this rental car that didn't have park, but it also didn't have a clutch. So, so we're tootling through. And I got this appointment at um, Soldera, which by the way, they don't just do appointments. Like I emailed and said, can we come visit? And the guy, um, John Franco Soldera, Soldera emailed me back and was like, what's your interest in my winery? And I'm like, um, I really like wine yeah so he's Here's like okay fine here's your appointment time so we show up and it's like in a neighborhood right it's not this big fancy winery it's in a neighborhood but there are no signs so we don't know where we're going and we don't have maps and we don't have google and so we're driving around back and forth on a dirt road back and forth back and forth and um the only person i was like we have to stop and ask somebody right but it's not like there's a 7-eleven on the corner so the only person that we encountered was this woman who's probably in her 80s um she was walking on crutches and she was surrounded by chickens oh. and I don't actually speak Italian so I had to ask her in my 17 words of Italian that I know how to find John Franco Sodera I mean we were like a block away so she pointed us in the right direction but she started having this entire conversation with me in Italian which I didn't understand and eventually I nodded and left yeah so that was like, kind of funny nope <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. The, well, it's really funny that he's like, what is your interest? Or now it's like, bring everybody, please come. <laughs> That's exactly. so funny. No, that is awesome. I love that. That's a great story. That's why traveling is awesome. Cause you have stories right? like that. So but also cool. that's, that's why Google maps ruin travel. You can't get lost yeah. anymore. That is true. That actually is really terrifying. As a millennial, I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you not have Google maps or MapQuest? <laughs> How? <laughs> you know, you might not believe this, but there was a time where you had to go pick up people at the airport and you didn't have a phone to call them. You just oh, had to wait. Yeah. <laughs> and you could go like all the way up to the gate. Yeah. But you just had to wait for them. Wild like, times. You don't know where <laughs> yeah. they're coming and what's happening. They, they might be delayed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> Well, I just want to thank you so much again for joining us. I, I hope everyone enjoyed. I This is just so much fun. I could, we could just do this once a month, just catch up and on the, all the new latest reads and travel stories. I love it. Um, but I just want to say thanks everyone for tuning into this episode of The Lounge with Travify Academy. And thank you to our special guest, Stephanie, for joining us today. And thank be you. sure to, yes, and thank you so much. We really appreciate it again. And um, everyone listening though, be sure to subscribe to our podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of the latest episodes. And we hope you enjoyed our conversation today and join us again. But for now, stay safe and we'll catch you on the next flight.